Good morning, you guys. I'm out with Lucas this morning, and we're gonna go do some mountain flying. Uh, it's a beautiful sunny morning. It's Monday, which is always great, especially when it's sunny. <laughs> oh yeah, beautiful day. Yeah, uh, we're gonna go out to the east today and play up in the mountains up towards Chilliwack Lake. So let's get cruising. Well, you can definitely tell it's spring when all the tulip fields start to blossom. Look at that. Are these tulips? Yeah, these are all tulips down here. Oh. Beautiful. Pretty nice. And then we're gonna head up into those mountains right up over there. Okay. So right now we're gonna climb up to the mountains. We're going up to about 5,000 feet. So you can see we've got set up about 88% on our power setting there, which is great for a nice climb. And uh, you can see we've got 76 liters of fuel on board. And we're climbing, how fast? About 300 feet per minute right now, but we're doing 80 knots indicated. You can see we've got a pretty good headwind right now. So if you look right uh, there, we've got 83 on the airspeed indicator. But then this number here, 61, that's uh, our ground speed, which is taken off the GPS. And so you can see you've got about a 23 knot headwind there. So pretty good winds today. Yeah, so this is kind of interesting here. So we're up at uh, about 3,000 feet right now. And at surface, we had 12 degrees. And if you look here, we're currently at 10 degrees. So we've only dropped two degrees over those 3,000 feet, which typically, what's the standard lapse rate? Two degrees yeah, per 100 feet. Yeah, per 1,000 feet, exactly. Yeah, 1,000, sorry, yeah. yeah. So at 3,000 feet, we should have lost six degrees, but we've only lost two. So very shallow lapse rate today, which is partially why we have such stable weather as well. Lucas just dropped me off here. He's going to go for a little circuit around. He's up in the bowl here in MCF. Here he goes. What a day up here, man. It is absolutely beautiful. There's no wind up here, which is awesome because like I say, down in the valley, it's about 25 knots or so. And uh, so up here, no wind, really, really warm. The sun's just coming up over the peak here. Uh, beautiful little training area. This bowl here, uh, we were here last uh, week with the Germans. Uh, a week ago, yeah, a week ago. And uh, so we were just working in here. It's a really nice cirque, so just kind of like this depression or bowl. And so it's really good practice to come around here uh, work on your approaches, uh, wind finding procedures. Um, today there's actually not really any wind, but uh, really awesome place to be training. And we're up fairly high as well. I think we're at about four and a half thousand feet. And so it gives really awesome opportunity to just kind of work um, fairly close to the power threshold. I think we're hovering in ground effect about 92% here. And uh, so on takeoff, we're using about 96% to get out of here. So works really good. And then we pick this spot here. Here he comes again. So we decided to pick this spot right here because it's kind of up a little bit on a hill. You can see it drops down into the valley there. So we come up onto the hill here. And then this allows us kind of a nice quick easy out. There's a bit of a downhill, no trees in the way to get out of there. And so we're able to kind of scoot out of this uh, spot without using a whole lot of it. Nice work. All right, yeah, let's see how stable this is here. We're going a little fast though. We're doing about 38 knots. And there we are, we're slowed right down. We're using 52% power right now. It felt pretty stable there though, yeah, didn't it? Yeah, it? it did. Yeah, I really like that. Okay, why don't we go back around and try that again there. We're gonna go one more pass, I think. Okay. Go down a bit lower and a bit lower. slower on it. Okay. And just see how that feels, yeah. Maybe come into a hover or? Yeah, I think we should come into a hover as well. Okay. Just see the stability on that. I think that's a good idea. So we just tried landing on that ridge over there and uh, very unstable winds kind of gusting us up and down. We're using kind of a mix anywhere between 
like uh, 75 and 100% power. So it just depends on what the winds are doing to us, either gusting us up or down. And so I didn't really like that we aborted that one. But we're coming around to this side over, the, over here and we're noticing that the winds are funneling up the valley. And so we're getting quite a bit more stability on this side over here. So we're gonna try another pass and see how this one feels. That's a nice eye level view. I like this. Okay, so we're already slowed down to 40 knots. That's looking good. And we're just gonna feel the stability all the way in. If at any point we don't like it, we can just bail out. Got a really nice opportunity to just kind of peel off the right there if we feel like we need to. But as we're slowing down, we're down at uh, 31 knots now. Or at 64%. So things are looking really good. And the spot itself looks really good as well, eh? It does. Yeah, nice and flat. I like that. Lots of room to bail out. Ex exactly. So here comes our power now, 90%, 94. Now it starts dropping down again, which is expected because we're coming to the back side of this little hill. That's nice. Look at that, and we're in a hover here. 68, 70. Yeah, it'll come back uh -huh. up again. There's 92. Yeah. But I think we're good. Let's just come down now. We're right on the highest point. Let's not go any further forward. Otherwise, we're going to scooch off the front of the bridge here. But we're right in the right spot. Keep coming straight down. Don't go any further forward. It's a very easy tendency to let it continue to drift forward. That's so true. Yeah. And then as we get, you'll notice, as we get down lower, it's actually taking more power because we're out of that updraft wind, right? Yeah. And then we get into a nice hover. Now we're using only about 90%, which is great. And that's beautiful. Yeah, really good work. You worked that down really smoothly, really gently. Nice Thank seating you. check. And the snow is super solid right now yeah. because uh, it's just been packing and packing with all this sun and everything. So yeah, really good. Even without bear paws, we're really confident in landing it here. These look like bear tracks to me. I don't know. I got Do pretty, they? yeah, pretty good paw print. Maybe not. They're a little bit small. Cougar, maybe? maybe cougar. Yeah, a little bit small for a bear, but they have the same kind of like the claws and stuff yeah. like that. Yeah, pretty cool. If somebody knows their uh, animal tracks, tell me what those guys are. <laughs> definitely not like a mountain goat or something. No, definitely not. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get out of this beautiful spot. Yeah. Beauty, using about 96% here. We're at 5,800 feet. You can see that right there. And just bailing off the edge, beautiful. 98% coming off the edge. Very That's nice. fantastic, yeah. Nice and stable there, I like that. Cool, let's head up into the hills that way. Yeah, this is good here. And how are we doing in the hover? 90, uh, 98, 100, start moving forward. Lower a little bit of collective, there you go. If we see any more droop there, we gotta get out of here, but we don't see any more droop now. It's actually coming back down to 90. So I think we can slowly, slowly work our way into a hover. That's pretty good. There's 98 now. A little bit of a droop. Let's not go any further forward. Keep coming down. We're gonna get into uh, in-ground effect. It's gonna come back. So keep coming down, keep coming down. We're gonna get ourselves in-ground effect. RPMs are back up, which is good. Keep coming down. Let's touch it all the way down. There you go. That's nice. Yeah, so this one was tricky because we had this kind of this tight spot to come in here. We kind of had to hook it into the wind kind of the last minute, which made it more difficult. But um, we're definitely, we're getting an upflow wind here, but not super strong. Um, it's not enough to be like a hindrance, 
but it's not really helping us out a lot because now we're up at 6,300 feet, so we're really, really high. And um, we were using 100%. You, you were watching the droop, right? Yeah, I and saw so that. We had a decision point to make. We either had to bail out and get out of there right away, or we had to commit to the landing. And this okay. one, because of how slow the droop was, I could tell it was just kind of a little bit of a gusty wind in the situation. Like, we had the power, but then sometimes the wind would die out a little bit, and then we didn't have the power. And so it was it was close enough that I felt, okay, if we get in-ground effect, we're going to have the power we need to in-ground effect to be able to do that landing. Okay. And then the nice thing here is, other than those rocks, we've got nothing in our way. So if we just kind of use this escape route here, yep. we can just bail out of here and kind of uh, jump off the edge, right? So let's pick it back in the hover now. And we're going to notice that we're probably going to be uh, pretty low. They're going to be at 100%. RPMs will be just in the green. And then we're just going to have to kind of scooch it minimum power takeoff right off the edge here. So let's have a look. Uh, it's actually much better than expected. Uh, about 80, 94. There we go. Stay away from the rocks. Let's go right into this open area here and just scooch off the edge. Use that hill to your advantage. There you go. We actually got out of there with like 88% and less. <laughs> <laughs> that was nice. Very good. Yeah, let's see if we can make that bowl work right on the back side there. But we want to come in first time again. This is another circ here. So we're going to come in nice and shallow to this ridge here. Because this ridge is a little bit higher than the departure one over there. We want to make sure we're not up too high because we want to get a good sense of what this wind is doing in here. So get down a bit lower. Isn't it kind of a danger here to have downdrafts yes, in a bowl is. like this? Yes, it is. for sure. So I don't want to go in too low, right? Correct. Absolutely. Yeah. We don't want to go too low, but if you have a look over your left shoulder, see oh, how yeah. high we are okay, there? I see. We can yeah. get a pretty serious downdraft here and still make it out of there. So we want to make sure that we're not too high so we get a good sense. And I'm thinking right there looks like a nice spot. We want to right, that, yeah, right there. We want to check it out as we get lower, but um, how did that feel coming around there? Did we feel like any downdraft? Uh, not much. No, it felt very stable, 62% yeah. um, as we came around there at about 40 knots. So that's not bad. Let's come around again. This time we're going to be even a bit lower. We'll do one more pass similar to that one. Okay. And then if we feel comfortable with that one, because from here, from this angle, we can actually start assessing that spot. And it's not quite as flat as hoped no. for. <laughs> More of a slope than I thought. It is, yeah. But with this spot here, kind of by these rocks, that looks look way a little better bit better. Here. So maybe we can loop around the back and then come back out this side. Okay. That looks much better, yeah. I like that. Yeah, assessing that other one from a lower angle shows that not quite as good. I do oh, have. There it is. There's the droop. So we need to get out of here now. We need to lower the collective. There you go. <laughs> okay. So that's good. You have control there? Yeah, I have control. So you need to react really, really fast when you see that happening. So did you feel how it took more power all of a sudden? You could hear the RPM drooping a little bit. I didn't hear that. No? No, I ah, did not. Okay, there you go. Oh, there's a nice wind right there. Um, yeah, absolutely. I, so felt, I felt something like <laughs> the power, yes. you know, but I didn't hear it. No. Okay, let's come back around it again. So I could hear it immediately. You could kind of hear that rotor drooping. And that's the kind of thing that you're paying attention to in spots like that. Because the second you hear that, and even the second that you're feeling that power, like you need to raise that collective, that power needs to come up, that's your warning sign. That's your early warning sign. That, okay. whoa, we're getting a downdraft in here. And so this time we got down a bit lower and we realized, no, we don't actually have that power. I'm feeling more downdraft. Look at this, we're using 100% oh, yeah. there. I'm not as comfortable with this spot as I originally was when we came around in higher. So let's come around one more time. Um, keep a little bit more speed this time and a little bit more height because we're already up at 96. There we go. Coming nice and tight to this hillside here. I want lots of room to get out if we need to. Okay. So this is going to be our warning sign right here. We're going to come over that spot there. Start slowing down because now we have an easy out. And it's kind of pushing us here, actually. Yeah, it does. Yeah. Up. Yeah, up and out. Yeah. 
but I don't know that I feel comfortable coming into the hill at it. So I think we're gonna abort this spot. Just not quite comfortable enough with it. Especially being in the, you know, the almost 7,000 foot range, we're at like 6,600 feet. And so we're kind of pushing our power limits anyways at this point. Um, but this spot over here looks possibly good. Let's get down and take a, a little closer look at it. That's a nice indicator. You can see the trees moving. It's always good. <laughs> Shows that it's pretty strong winds over there. We're at 100% here. Okay, so we're, yeah, we're downwind right now. 100%, yeah. And looking at this angle, does it look like there's a relatively flat spot up there? Now it does. Now it does, right? Okay. What we're going to do is we're going to come in kind of along the shadow line. You see where the shadow and the sun hit there? Yeah. So we're going to come along that line. What I really like about this spot, as opposed to the bowl that we were just in, is this one has an easy out pretty much the entire way in, right? Yeah. So we follow that shadow line anytime we want. We just do a quick bailout to the right and we're out of there. So let's start coming around to the right now. It's crazy, we're at 98% and yeah. now we're like... Yeah, what a difference, right? Yeah. Just turn around and boom. So let's get down a bit lower. That's looking good. Yeah, so I really like the opportunity to bail off to the right if we need to. And then I want to pull into a hover even out here if we can, or at least slow it down a bit, bring in that power, and let's really get a sense of how we're doing back here. It's going to be a little bit erroneous because that wind will be coming over the edge. Won't give us quite the same reading as if we were right there. But it's at least going to give us a sense. So there's a hundred. There's a little bit of a droop. Yeah. Let's move a little forward. We might need a bailout. But at this point, we still have an easy out off to the right. Our pims are back. Don't get in too tight here. Yeah, it's drooping again. Off to the right we go. And that's it. Yeah, I think we could do it, but it's very close to the borderline and we're gonna skip it. Okay. I think that's good enough. So the aborting sometimes is as important as the landing. <laughs> yeah, so knowing, I agree. Yeah, knowing when it's time to abort and when it's time to go in is just as critical. So the experience that you're gaining uh, it's just important either way. So um, that was good. Let's uh, start making our way back that way. Okay. So we had opportunities where we were able to make it, opportunities where we weren't able to make it. Um, and I think both give really, really important learning. And it's very interesting flying in some winds. So like when we were down in the bowl there at Mount Chiem, there was actually no wind. We thought there was a little bit, kind of felt like it a little bit on our recon. But uh, when I was standing out there, I couldn't feel a breath of wind. There was nothing. And, okay. and so that was really interesting because in there it was extremely stable. No matter where we went, we were getting very similar power. Whereas in these spots, it's very dramatically different. You can see that, right? And so when you're working close to your power limits, we have to be really careful with that because it can feel one moment like, oh man, we got all the power in the world. We're using like 75%. And the next minute you're using 100% and you're drooping. And all it takes is, you know, you come over a little ridge or whatever, the winds shift just a little bit, all of a sudden, boom, you lose that extra lift. So when you know that you're at an altitude where you're near the aircraft's normal power limitation, wind aside, then you have to be extremely careful. Yep. So that's what, doing the procedures that we were doing there, having the ability to have an out, especially in that last bowl where we kind of got the droop of RPM and we had to really rush out of there. Uh, super, super critical to have that out at all times, know where you're gonna get out. Because if you just blindly go in there and say, I don't know, let's give it a shot and you get down too low and you have no out, now what's gonna happen? When that RPM droops, you're sinking. Yeah, we're going down over this way. Okay. You're sinking down into that spot and you have no option to get out. And that's where things like settling with power come in. Okay. Where you just simply don't have enough power to slow down the aircraft anymore. And you're just gonna come in and have a hard hit. Um, and that's unfortunate because that does happen. People don't uh, set themselves up properly and then they just get themselves into a, a bad situation. So I actually just, somebody just sent me a video uh, yesterday from a Bell 212. It was a sheriff's um, helicopter. I didn't actually look where it was. It was somewhere down in the US. Um, and they just got into LTE. They were doing a mountain rescue up at, I think it was like 68 or 7,800 feet or something like that. So fairly high, big crew on board and stuff like that. They were trying to rescue a couple of hikers. And um, they got into a situation where they, they were headed uphill, kind of not really in a cirque, but kind of in a, in a, a, a large hill area uh, up in the mountains, bit of a snow cover. And um, they were pointed uphill 
and they got into a tailwind situation. They had a bit of a, an updraft and a tailwind situation, and all of a sudden they, they lost their lift, and they got into LTE and they started spinning. Ooh. And it was wild because the guy who had a, a GoPro on his head, and you could watch the whole thing happen, and um, the aircraft actually spun, I think it was twice or something like that, and hit the ground and then lifted off again. I couldn't believe it. You actually saw the aircraft on the ground, up in the air again, and then they're flying. And for the longest time, I couldn't figure out what was going on. And then they actually fly the aircraft back to base, back to the airport. And, and then you find out later that the skid, they had hit hard enough that one of the skids had actually broken. Oh. And, uh, but they didn't hit, like, it wasn't hard enough to, to damage the tail boom or anything, I guess, and nothing else hit. And so they were able to fly it home and they had to land the aircraft on pallets. And they actually shut it down <laughs> um, on pallets, which was crazy. One skid was good, the other skid was uh, was all broken and stuff. So that was super intriguing, sort of to see that situation with the loss of tail rotor effectiveness. And then, um, yeah, and then even coming in contact with the ground and then continue flying, which in that situation, I wouldn't really recommend it, but uh, I guess it was for them the safest thing that they could do is just to get out of that, that area there, so. Um, but that was intriguing. But that was it was kind of a, a good um, reminder of how those winds can totally dramatically affect uh, not only your power but your tail rotor's power as well, right? Yeah, that was how much the first we had. The yes. first on the on the hill there. Yes. But we lost. Exactly. We were a bit crosswind there. We weren't completely downwind. It was kind of quartering us from the back left side, and it was enough that it was pushing the tail um, around, and so you were at full right pedal. Yeah. And and the aircraft still wanted to yaw and we were at 100%, and so we just had to lower the collective. So we were talked about that a little bit as well, is as soon as you lower a collective, you get power back in those pedals, right? And so that's a really important thing to remember as well. If you're starting to get into LTE, loss of tail rotor effectiveness, just drop a bit of the power. If the ground's not immediately underneath you, drop a bit of power that's gonna give you some power back to the pedal again. And uh, so then you can keep that nose straight, nose over, so immediately a bit of forward cyclic, uh, get some, some keel effect, so wind flowing back over the, the fins yep. on the back. Uh, you get that keel effect, and then uh, as soon as you get that, everything comes back. You get back into translational lift, you have no uh, loss of tail rotor effectiveness anymore, and you're good to go, so. Whew. Lots of good stuff. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoyed this short video. Um, if you did, as always, please give it a thumbs up. That's always really helpful. And even better, leave a uh, comment below. And uh, if you guys have had any experiences like this, um, any loss of tail rotor effectiveness or power uh, situations being up in the mountains and stuff like that, why don't you leave a little comment about that below as well. We always love to hear you guys' stories. And until next time, we'll talk to you later. See ya. Yeah.